rap, hip hop, has become the rhythm of resistance throughout the Islamic world. It, um, as we all know, the first uprising, the first successful uh, upheaval was in Tunisia. Last December, when a street vendor set himself on fire to protest the corruption and abuse of government officials. But it was in a broader context of a young rapper who'd written a song that said things that no politician had ever dared say against President Ben Ali in Tunisia, challenging him on the fact that people were hungry and eating off garbage on the streets, that there was no law that was enforced by the police, that there was so much corruption. And he posted this song because hip hop was illegal in Tunisia, couldn't be recorded, couldn't be played on state control media, couldn't be performed in public. So he posted it on Facebook and 20% of Tunisians are on Facebook. And so this song took off in ways, and it was in the, that climate that the street vendor challenged the regime and introduced a whole new type of martyrdom. And as people were then marching on the Capitol uh, afterwards to protest the, um, uh, the corruption, they were singing this young rapper's song, which then took off in Egypt and then in Bahrain. And there are lots of different ways in which uh, one sees the culture, whether it is the new Muslim comedians who are telling jokes against Osama bin Laden, uh, the, the new playwrights who have written plays with the word jihad in them. For example, Jihad Jones and the Kalashnikov Babes, which is by a young Egyptian playwright and it's a parody about stereotypes of Muslims. There's another one called Till Jihad Do Us Part, which is a parody on the marital vow, and it's a romantic comedy, and it's using the term jihad to describe the challenge of being a good marital partner.